What's up guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be part zero, a brief introduction of a new series in which I discuss how I view bodybuilding in terms of programming and in terms of mindset, okay? Uh, this part, again, as the title suggests, is a brief introduction. I'm just going to dabble with a couple of topics that I think are very important to establish the base in which we are going to build the series on. Uh, very, like, specifically, uh, this part is going to be about sustainability, um, about independence, and why you should build a home gym, basically. So... Let me just start off by saying bodybuilding is a long-term thing, okay? You'll see a lot in social media, people that tell you you can get amazing results in 100, 90, 60, or even 30 days. They will usually push supplements, okay, or a program, and they'll tell you, hey, if you follow this protocol, you'll, you'll get jacked, okay? Pay me for my supplements and for my protocol, okay? And this is just bullshit, okay? Um, it's just marketing and trying to scam people and I think it's pretty pathetic in my opinion and disgusting um, because objectively um, building a great physique uh, an, an aesthetic physique takes years okay perhaps even decades it doesn't take 30 days 60 days it takes a long time so bodybuilding is a really long-term thing it's almost a lifestyle okay it's the same as diet you don't Think of diet as something you start and something that you end because you will rebound and start and end up where you started or even worse. Okay. Um, bodybuilding is a thing that you start and never end. The same goes with diet. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to talk to you about the aspect of sustainability. Okay. Because bodybuilding is a long-term thing, consistency will be perfection every single time. Okay, you'll have uh, a guy that does things decently and does them constantly, uh, consistently, and then you have another guy that does things perfectly but takes six months in between. So he does things perfectly for a couple of months, then takes six months off, then goes back to doing things perfect, uh, perfectly. And you'll see that the guy that does things fairly decent and does them consistently will get better results than the guy that does them perfectly. So what does this mean? It means that you don't uh, have to follow the optimal way to get the results that you want. Because again, bodybuilding is a long-term thing. So the um, you have to focus more on finding a sustainable approach instead of the perfect approach, if that makes sense. So to start off with, um, well, we are going to go to my the, the basis of my bodybuilding approach, which is going to be a bodybuilding method in which you use minimal equipment to achieve your goals, okay? Minimal can change the, the definition of minimal. Some uh, people will just need a pull-up bar, others might need to get a weight belt and or rings, others will get bands, another guy may get barbells and plates and so on. Um, this is basically buying only which helps and supports your goals uh, or helps you achieve your goals. And this can change based on your preferences, your require, uh, your experience level, your injuries, your um, available space, in, among other things, right? You basically have an investment to reward mindset when getting equipment. So you think like Alpha Destiny says, get more out of less weight. Well, you try to get more out of less equipment, okay? And your goals and preferences will dictate your requirements and your requirements will dictate your equipment and your equipment will dictate your program. Um, this is basically saying um, based on who you are and what you like and uh, what will allow you to have a sustained long-term approach uh, to training, you will choose your equipment and based off that you will program basically. Um, the main uh, thing with this is that you need to get a home gym, okay? I'm talking about equipment right away because it's very important that you get a home gym. Why you ask? Well, I believe it's the way for most people, okay? I believe that most people should get a, a home gym mainly because first, it's convenient, okay? Um, for people that don't like to work out, okay, or people that don't have the, the habit of working out, um, the best way to build a habit is to, first of all, make it as approachable as possible, okay? So it's it should, it's supposed to be easy, it's supposed to not be taxing on your willpower, okay? Because willpower 
will help you to start things off, but it's terrible in terms of sustaining a habit. You can't depend on willpower. Uh, you have to learn how to reinforce that habit without willpower, okay? So to build a habit, the goal is to make it as simple as possible uh, that requires as little willpower as possible. And at the same time, you have to do it as frequently as possible, okay? So what does this mean? You should do very frequent, very short and simple workouts. Um, so for some people, right, uh, going to the gym may tax their willpower, okay? Uh, or for most people in general. So if you want to do something very frequently and not tax your willpower, going to the gym is very taxing in terms of, it's very costly in terms of willpower. So having a home gym allows you to basically save that willpower for other things, right? You get home from, from work, you get home from college or from school, right? You don't have to take a shower, get changed, go to the gym, go uh, come back from the gym, uh, get, take a shower, get changed again, have dinner, then go back, to, uh, then go to sleep. You just get home from work or college, you get changed, you start working out, you can set up your meal to be done as soon as you finish eating, uh, as soon as you finish working out, and then you eat, then you take a shower, you can go to sleep. It doesn't take a lot of you. And also it allows you to fit better in your schedule. Um, because again, it's in your house, you can wake up early, like 30 minutes early, or do a 10 minute workout, get changed, and then go on with your day. Okay, so it's very convenient. Um, also, it's very cheap, because in this day and age, just doing hard things in general, uh, people don't like, okay, like, we live in a very hedonistic society, and people are very soft, in terms of they don't want to push against resisting. So just working out by itself can be considered as too much for these kind of people. Um, so on top of that, not only like not only are they like uh, against working out, but imagine you have to convince them of working out, and on top of that, they have to you have to convince them to pay to work out, okay? Or to convince yourself, maybe you're trying to uh, start by yourself. Um, that doesn't really work, right? Uh, like that puts. Uh, yeah, it basically puts another obstacle in the in your goal, in the path to uh, build a habit of working out. And also you open the door to deviations in that path, right? So uh, people will say stuff like, oh, I don't have the money. It's too expensive. Working out is expensive. I can't do that. Um, so it's easier to uh, convince someone to just uh, spend a small amount of money, make a small investment in a pull-up bar and just do pull-ups and push-ups at home than it is to make them spend money on a gym membership every month. Uh, if you know what to buy, you can really get a, like a, a good setup for a disproportionately low amount of, uh, amount of money and you get the benefits of convenience and also you don't have to pay a gym membership. Uh, if you get, for example, stuff like rings, you can basically work out outside or work out inside and um, for almost no money, right? Uh, the same with a pull-up bar or parallel bars. Um, the next one is that most people never get to a point where they need a gym, right? I'm, I'm guilty of this. I wasted three years of my life on, on the gym and I'm not saying the gym is bad. Okay. The gym is the most effective way of building muscle in my opinion. But, um, the thing is the environment, uh, just, yeah, you'll see a lot. If you go to the gym, you'll know, okay. You'll see a lot of skinny guys that go there every single year, right? And they look the exact same, okay? Uh, it looks like they just go there to stand and look at their phones and look at chicks and stuff like that, right? Um, I'm uh, Again, I was guilty of that myself. I, I wouldn't really push myself hard on the workouts. I would try a, a lot of gimmicky exercises, Brian Humiston type exercises. And to be completely honest with myself, I was better off just doing pull-ups and push-ups at home, right? Uh I believe that this is mainly because personal trainers or gym staff are just trash, okay? They will give you terrible advice. Uh, they're usually DLs themselves, so they can't even do 10 push-ups, and they are trying to tell you what to do. Um, and also, again, paralysis by analysis. You'll see these gimmicky movements, all these machines, and you start to do... Um, you, you are like, oh, should I do cable crossovers, or should I do bench press, and then do a pre-exhaust and a drop set, and... Uh, you overcomplicate stuff needlessly, okay? And just 
uh, being at home with the simplicity of a pull-up bar and the floor and nothing else makes things way straightforward. If you can do 10 push-ups now, work out to doing 10 push-ups, then do 12, then do 15, then elevate your feet, then do diamond push-ups, uh, or you can do one-arm push-ups, you can do pseudo plunge. So it's far straight, uh, more straightforward than uh, going to the gym, at, at least when you're starting out, right? You don't know what you're doing and the people that are there also don't know what they're doing, okay? And the final two aspects are freedom. Again, this is pretty like uh, self-explanatory. You're at home, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can train in your underwear, you can train naked, you can train with uh, blasting music on top volume, you can do whatever the fuck you want, basically. And time management, what I said, it saves time and it fits on your schedule no matter what. It's very convenient, okay? Um, so yeah, with that in mind, um, we have to ask ourselves to start off with this whole thing. What is your situation? Okay. Before you buy anything, you have to ask yourself, what type of physique do I want? Do I want an upper body focused physique? Do I want a lower body focused physique? Do I want a balanced physique? Do I want a uh, more lean focused physique? Based on that, right, you'll see um, some training types of training that will benefit one type of physique compared to the other. For example, if your goal is to have a lower body focused physique, you won't you won't be looking at gymnasts, right? Or if you want an upper body focused physique, you won't really be looking at power lifters, uh, especially if you're limb focused, right? Um, with that in mind, you will have like a list of possible training styles, and you have to ask yourself what type of training suits me best. So it may be weights, barbells, and dumbbells. Uh, it, and inside that may be power building, it may be power lifting, it may be just straight up bodybuilding, um, bodybuilding training, which is the most effective, of course, but preference again. Um, is it weighted calisthenics? Is it bodyweight calisthenics? Is it a mix of everything like uh, Alpha Destiny does, for example? Um, once you filter uh, the type of physique that you want, and based on that, uh, the type of training that you want to do. You have to ask yourself how much space do you have available and what is your budget to spend on gym equipment, right? To know what type of gym equipment uh, you should buy, you, you have to, of course, answer those questions, right? For example, someone that uh, money is not an issue, but available spaces, he might consider getting a weight belt, plates, plyo boxes, and a good pull-up or dip station. For someone with a lot of space but low... Uh, budget, he might get a pull-up bar, a barbell, and plates, right? It depends a lot in your individual context. What, uh, again, what what are your goals? What do you prefer? Um, and the other aspects that we previously talked about. Um, this is uh, a thing that I want to clarify. Upper body is easy to hit with any type of equipment because you can always do push-ups and pull-ups, uh, either one-arm push-ups, pseudo-planche push-ups, um, decline one-arm push-ups, clapping push-ups, you can do a variety of uh, things with just no equipment, okay, in terms of pushing, and in terms of pulling, you can do pull-ups, uh, front levers, so yeah, you don't need a lot of equipment for upper body, maybe for arms, um, but the for lower body, uh, it's different, You, I believe that you need weights if you want to maximize your body size, uh, your lower body size, um, Either get a weight belt and plyo boxes with plates so you can do like a, a belt squats or just get a barbell and plates. And if you want to rack, you already have a pull-up bar right there. So it may be beneficial. I believe that, yeah, you should use weights if you want to grow your lower body. I want to clarify that. And regarding other types of equipment or equipment in general, I have a criteria. I label them as high reward and low reward. Um, basically high reward exercises versus low reward exercises. Um, the, the criteria that I use is these questions, basically. Uh, for example, how many movements can I do with this? How many variations? Uh, uh, an example of a high reward uh, in terms of investment, gym equipment would be rings, for example. Uh, how many movements can I do with this? How many variations? Uh, how many muscle groups can I target with this equipment? Basically, every single muscle group in your upper body and hamstrings and, ca and calves with ring hamstring curls. Um, how easy it is to apply progression, right? Um, 
add more reps, add more sets. You can modify the leverages. You can add weights. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of space. It costs almost nothing. It's very durable. Um, it opens a lot of doors in terms of programming because you have isolation movements, you have compounds, you have variations of compounds and variations of isolations. Is it necessary? It's not really necessary, but it's really recommended, especially if you're an intermediate uh, lifter. Uh, I believe that rings fit you very nicely. It's very portable and it's very accessible. Anyone can get rings, even if you're in a third world country. But a low reward, for example, uh, an equipment that is low reward would be something like an ab wheel, for example. You can really do a lot of movements. You can do a, really a lot of variations. Um, applying progression is kind of, uh, you can you could modify the leverages, but you, who does weighted up, uh, up rollouts, right? Uh, it doesn't take a lot of space, that's true. It costs a decent amount. That type of equipment is very overrated, usually, because they usually sell it to to novices and to uh, and to women in general. They tell them, oh, yeah, you can burn belly fat if you do have rollouts, right? <laughs> um, you can't really target a lot of muscle groups. Uh, it's not very really durable. Uh, and also, it doesn't open many doors in terms of programming. It's not necessary because you can do crunches, leg races, blah, blah, blah. It's portable, yeah, uh, and it's overall decently accessible, right? But it's still a low reward exercise, uh, low reward equipment, sorry. Uh, based on that criteria, I made a list with recommended equipment under my own criteria, right? Uh, if for your individual needs, uh, barbells, plates, maybe upper and bands and parallel bars, maybe lower, right? But this is under my criteria, a pretty decent list and um, you can get a pretty good physique with just the first tier and you can get an amazing physique with the first two tiers, right? Um, so yeah, in, in general, this is basically what I think about uh, programming. Um, I am I mainly focus on calisthenics, right? Um, because this is what I own myself. I own rings and bands and it has changed my life. Um, calisthenics. And or weighted calisthenics are going to be the bulk of my programs. Uh, I'm going to release a weighted calisthenics program in the future. Uh, I'm also going to release a, a high rep calisthenics program too. Um, but yeah, the in general, my programs will have calisthenics and or weighted calisthenics, and as the main thing, as the as the as the meat of the program. And bands will be a cable substitute, right? Uh, bands are really good for that. And if you have barbells, plates, and dumbbells at home, you can uh, use them as well. Um, it's very important that you learn the skill of translating programs to fit your specific situation. So I may put a certain exercise in my program and you can replace it with a barbell variation, for example. Let's say I put front lever pull-ups and you want to change them by seal rolls, for example. Uh, that can be done. Uh, Again, uh, you can also change the parameters. So let's say I do uh, weighted pull-ups with a four to eight rep range. If you want, you can change the rep range to three to five. It's very important that you uh, learn to change the, um, yeah, the triforce of programming and to find replacements to suit your specific needs. Uh, you have to learn how to do that by yourself. Uh, you can't rely on someone else's program, right? It's just a general guideline that you can use to, um, get yourself on track, right? And also you have to learn how to apply progression in different ways besides reps, sets, and weights because you won't be always able to add more weight or add uh, an extra rep. Especially if you're doing bodyweight calisthenics, you can't basically add weight and you won't be able to add reps every single time. So you may add a pause, you may change the leverages, um, you may do a slow eccentric, you may do pre-exhaustion, uh, you may add a set too. So it's very important that you learn how to progress outside the, the basics. And the most important thing, in my opinion, okay, is being creative with the available equipment that you have and the room space you have too. Uh, for example, let's say you want to work your shoulders, right? Uh, but you still can't do handstand push-ups or you don't like handstand push-ups, right? Uh, you can put your, uh, your feet on top of a, of a window ledge or something like that. And you can put your hands on top of two chairs and have like a hole in the middle so you can put your head through and do deficit pike push-ups, right? Um, or let's say you're working out with rings and 
ring push-ups are already too uh, too easy. You can do like 15 plus ring push-ups. Well, you can find a way to elevate your feet or, or maybe you start doing um, archer push-ups, right? You have to find ways to keep challenging yourself um, and to find ways to work with your equipment and uh, basically get the the best the most out of the equipment you have um, to have a complete program so yeah that's basically it this is like uh, part zero and uh, part one is coming soon it's going to be about um, exercise selection how to how I count volume in general and uh, basically ba yeah that's basically it exercise selection how to classify certain movement patterns and uh, how to count volume on them Part two is going to be more programming focused uh, in terms of volume, intensity, and that type of stuff. So, yeah, I hope you liked it. And uh, please give me your feedback in the comments below what you would like to see in this new series. And uh, as always, uh, good to see you guys and talk to you soon.